Kirk Shireman, International Space Station Deputy Program Manager here in Baikonur. Uh, Kirk, yesterday the Soyuz was in several segments, already vertical, ready for launch on Thursday. Your thoughts as you watched uh, the vehicle roll to the pad today? Uh, it's always amazing to be here and see how this production works uh, from, like you said, from pieces to having the shroud on to having it made it in the vehicle and come out in just a matter of uh, less than 10 minutes. It's vertical and, uh, and the crews are already attaching the, uh, the uh, launch towers to the rocket. So it's amazing uh, uh, production they have here. Very efficient, very reliable. So it's great to, uh, great to be here and great to witness this uh, effort. Even as Discovery is still docked to the International Space Station, still conducting the STS-119-15A mission, uh, another vehicle about to head to the space station, a busy traffic pattern in orbit. Uh, how, how has this all been choreographed very carefully, very closely, so that one vehicle follows the other? Yeah, it's, uh, I think this is really our future. We're doing it uh, in this particular mission. We had some delays uh, in making sure everything was right for the shuttle launch, and in fact, uh, uh, getting the last hydrogen leak fixed, uh, which put this shuttle very close to the Soyuz. Uh, we worked the details. In fact, we had a number of options depending on what day the shuttle launched and, and how much of the 15A-119 uh, mission we'd have to, to cut off if we needed to to get these flights in in this time frame. Uh, I think that's really going to be our future. So uh, today we talked about shuttle and Soyuz, but in the future it'll be HTVs, ATVs, Progresses, Soyuzes, uh, shuttles, uh, and so are our CRS cargo resupply vehicles. So we're looking forward to this for the future. It's a great learning experience, and, and again, it's good for, for uh, our ops teams here in the U.S. and in, uh, and in Russia to uh, learn how to work through these kinds of issues. Gennady Padalka is soon to become the first person to command a space station twice now. And Mike Barrett, no stranger to Russian operations, about to embark on his first flight. How complicated will this increment be sort of as a bridge to the inauguration of six-person crew coming up in the spring? So I think that's the that's the key. These, these guys are going to be up there for a few months until May, uh, with the crew of three getting uh, the space station ready. The final checkouts on all the uh, all the new cargo, the new uh, hardware we brought up to support six-person crew, uh, and then we'll have the six people on board, and that's a new way of life for all of us. And so it'll be interesting to uh, to work through the issues that we'll have. Uh, again, uh, to have have uh, uh, the the crews and what tasks they'll be doing and how they work together, and and, it, and then the strain on the overall system, both on board all the, uh, the environmental control and life support systems and so on, but also on the ground support systems and making sure all the, the planning and activities go as, the, as they need to and as efficiently. So it's a very learning, uh, big learning experience for us. It'll be a learning experience for the guys on board and a very ex exciting time for the ISS. The other unique thing about this particular increment is when we go to six-person crew in May, these guys will be on board and we'll have for the, for the uh, first time and perhaps the only time in the ISS program, we'll have one member from, uh, from uh, each of the